This week, we're gearing up for our vacation Bible school. I don't know where Therese is, but I'm sure things are exciting and uh, going to be very exciting this week. And Daniel and others in the ch children's ministry, uh, I thought that they were just trying to put aluminum foil all over a side of one of our classrooms, but it turns out that they, our stellar theme is going to be wonderful with um, uh, helping us to enjoy that. And the theme is Shine Jesus' Light. So we're looking forward to this week. But keep them in your prayers. Uh, one of the great ends of the Presbyterian Church is the shelter and nurture of the children of God. And uh, whether those are elementary age students or uh, just people returning from Mo Ranch, had uh, almost over 20 middle schoolers at Mo Ranch last week, nearly half a dozen at uh, the Synod Worth uh, Youth Camp. We take that very seriously, and if you'd like to help with our children's ministry, please do let uh, Teresa know. Uh, we also are looking forward to our summer choir. Uh, Jennifer has put together some wonderful music, some joyful noise. Last Was it last week we had the harmonica? Uh, and uh, which was a lot of fun and uh, jazz. And uh, so today we have the band that's going to lead us. And so let us stand, and uh, Jennifer's going to teach us a good way to celebrate Psalm 100. Thank you, Paul. This is a wonderful setting of Psalm 100. It's very singable. In fact, your very own Kenley Lang wrote this a gazillion years ago. Um, so I'm going to, you may have actually sung it with him in the past. I don't know that. So not knowing. We're going to introduce it to you now, and then we'll go back to the beginning and sing it all together. So, the words are, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. I'll sing it, you'll sing it back. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All people make a joyful noise. Sing with me. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All people make a joyful noise. And then it goes like this. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Lord, all people make a joyful noise. Do it with me. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All people make a joyful noise. And then it's this. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into God's presence with a song. Do that with me. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into God's presence with a song. And then we do it again. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into God's presence with a song. Do that. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into God's presence with a song. And then we go back to our make a joyful noise. All right. So I invite you just to sing with gusto as you are able. And here we go. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all people make a joyful noise. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all people make a joyful noise. Serve the Lord with gladness, come into God's presence with a song. Serve the Lord with gladness, come into God's presence with a song. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all people make a joyful noise. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all people song of praise unto the Lord. Sing All people sing a song of praise. Sing a song of praise unto the Lord. All people sing a song of praise. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into God's presence with a song. Serve the Lord with gladness. To God's presence with a song, sing a song of praise unto the Lord. All people sing a song of praise, sing a song of praise unto the Lord. All people sing a song of praise. Amen. Amen.
kids, have you, ever, have you ever made a really big mess and gotten it all over your hands? Well, that's what happened to me. I was working on some VBS decorations and now I have glue all over my hands. Let me see, maybe some tissue can get it off. Yeah, that, that isn't working. That's, that's not going to work. Let me see, let me, let me try something else. Maybe, maybe some hand sanitizer. Maybe some hand sanitizer should work. Oh yeah, I think that's working. There. Now my hands are all clean. But how do we get clean on the inside? How do we clean our hearts? That might seem like a strange question, but the simple answer is we can't. Well, not by ourselves at least. You see, we're all imperfect and sometimes we have bad thoughts or want to do bad things. And that's when we need God. We need God to help us and create a pure heart in us. Sometimes it's hard to do the right thing, but with God, all things are possible. Thanks for listening. It's now time for Sunday school. You're welcome to see your Sunday school teachers in the back, and I'll see you next time. Bye. I think I just experienced deja vu. <laughs> but we're going to keep hearing it until we live it out, all right? Uh, so, make a joyful noise to the Lord is our uh, Psalm 100. We are in this sermon series during the summer on Psalms to go. In fact, uh, your memory verse uh, is a little pizza cutout on the way uh, out by the uh, entrances. But make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. And uh, we're to worship God and to glorify God. And we're going to sing a fun uh, little uh, chorus. In my life, Lord, be glorified. <clears throat> In my life, Lord, be glorified. Sunday, we had Christmas in July, and this is Deja Vu Sunday. 
Uh, for those of us, uh, we were able to see that moment for mission on living waters last week as well. So this morning, I'm going to lead us in our prayers. And uh, I'm going to say, end a phrase with, Lord, in your mercy, and you respond, hear our prayer. Let's try that. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let's pray. <clears throat> Gracious God, we pray that especially as we worship you this day, that we would be united in your truth and love and be able to reveal your grace in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide all your children in your world in the ways of justice and peace that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth that you created, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the leaders of the world to look for ways to live in harmony with one another. Give them discernment and wisdom as they deal with incredible and challenging problems like hunger, poverty, homelessness, and war. Lord, in your mercy, hear your prayer. Lord, we pray for those who are sick, hurt, or who have lost loved ones. We pray that your presence would help them as you walk with them through the valley. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as Christ loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we also pray for children who have died because of violence or war. Forgive us for being numbed by the numbers of these tragedies. Help us to look for every possible way to stop future violence and work for peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, and spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them joy of your love and grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray all these things, who taught us also to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. <coughs>
steps with a robe is really a challenge. But anyway, thanks for the, thanks for the joyful, making a joyful noise, because that's what we needed this morning. So I was knowing that I, I have known that I was going to preach this Sunday for a few months. About a month ago, I decided to take a look at the passage that I'd be preaching. I knew it was a psalm because we'd been talking about that at great length during our planning times. So I went to my calendar on my phone, and I saw what I thought was the psalm that I would be preaching, and it said Psalm 109. Now, just to give you a clue um, as to my distress at that moment, I'm going to read just a little bit of that psalm. First of all, it's called A Prayer for Vindication and Vengeance. <laughs> Do not be silent, O God, of my praise, for wicked and deceitful mouths are opened against me, speaking against me with lying tongues. They surround me with words of hate and attack me without cause. In return for my love, they accuse me even when I make prayer for them. Mm, I was really worried. Imagine my relief when I realized that it was Psalm 100 that I was going to speak about. Although Psalm 109 might have been more entertaining. <laughs> and it probably does have its place. Thankfully, it's not here today. So listen to the words of Psalm 100. It's a psalm of thanksgiving. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, bless his name, for the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever ever, and his faithfulness to all generations. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This is also a psalm I can preach. Please join me in prayer. Illumine us, O God. Bless us with ears to hear your truth, vision to discern your path, and then feet ready to move into action, responding to your call. Guide us and inspire us in this moment of proclamation. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. So Mrs. Smith was fumbling for her purse, trying to get her offering, when a large television remote fell out of her purse and clattered onto the aisle. The curious usher bent over to retrieve it for her, and he whispered, do you always carry your TV remote to church? No, she said, but my husband refused to come with me this morning, and I figured this was the most evil thing that I could do <laughs> legally. Now, I hope that all of you come willingly to worship every week. Having said that, this psalm is a call to worship. That is how to come to worship. How do you prepare? for worship on Sunday morning. I mean, sometimes it can become so routine. It can become just part of the ritual we have that defines one week from the next. But should our encounter with God be a forgettable event? Shouldn't we prepare our minds and our hearts every week for worship? Let me take you back to the Old Testament history when this psalm might have been first heard. Journey with me for a moment. 
Imagine that you're a Jew who lives in ancient Near East and it's time for one of those annual Jewish festivals. You're making the pilgrimage to the holy city of Jerusalem in obedience to the Torah. Your destination is the temple. Your purpose is worship. And your motivation is thanksgiving for all that God has done for you and your people. Lofty, and it seems right. You leave home, focused, determined, expectant, but something changes along the way. The journey is long. The sun is hot. Things just don't seem to be going the way you'd hope. The path is unyielding. And that animal that you're bringing to sacrifice is burdensome. The caravan that you're traveling with is noisy. I mean, you left home. You were focused then, but now you're frustrated and you keep asking yourself, why did I leave home again to go through this? You can't answer that question because you have lost the sight for the reason that you headed to Jerusalem in the first place. Worship and thanksgiving. In your frustration, you continue to Jerusalem and then you hear a noise a joyful, beautiful, harmonious noise. And as you reach the gates of the city, you see the source of that noise. There are greeters there waiting for you. They don't greet you with a handshake. Instead, they lift a song. As words of the song sink in, your frustration melts away. You regain focus for worship. This would have been the experience of many pilgrims who would travel to Jerusalem for worship they would make their way, losing sight of why they were going until they heard those greeters lifting a call to worship. And that call to worship was very likely Psalm 100. What about you? Does this journey sound a little like your life on a Sunday morning? Of course, our journey is not as arduous, long, or even strenuous. I mean, we probably don't even call it a journey. But in many ways, it is. It's the time from waking up to walking in the door of our sanctuary. I believe that each of us have come here this morning with all the frustrations of getting ready and getting here, and then we hear the music and the reminder of why it is that we've made the effort. Pastor Paul, Jennifer, Todd, and I can only pray that after you arrive and sit in this place participating in worship, you are reminded of why you made the effort. I mean, even if you're worshiping with us online, I pray that you can experience a worship that reminds you why you watch. It's how we can worship the God who has brought us from our life of blessings and frustrations. We don't come to be entertained. I pray that we come to worship. I mean, sometimes we get both. But we come to worship first. Anything else is a bonus. Psalm 100 is one of the most beloved psalms, only rivaled in popularity, actually, to Psalm 23. It's been a regular part of Jewish worship since antiquity, and it's been central to Christian worship throughout history. In fact, during the 16th century, reformers paraphrased this psalm and set it to lots of different metrical tunes all around the world. Churches used it in many different ways during their worship to remind us and their people why we must worship. For me, this psalm is about the essence of worship. In it are the verbs that we use. Make a joyful noise. Serve the Lord. Know who God is. We are God's people. Enter with thanksgiving and give thanks. It's as if the writer is saying, if you want to know how to thank God, let me show you the way. The point of the whole message is this. It's our duty and our privilege to give thanks to God for who God is and what God has done for us in our lives. Thanksgiving is not about a day on a calendar, a set of circumstances, or a particular mood we're in at any given time. We have a duty, a responsibility, 
to give thanks and to worship God for who God is and what God has done for us every day in all we do. Now, much about this psalm strikes me as good worship. But I believe verse 1 in its simplicity is often where we miss the mark. Make a joyful noise. The first four words of that verse, make a joyful noise. If we were translating from the Hebrew, the one word that could be translated simply would be shout. Theologian Frederick Beekner says, church worship shouldn't be like sitting in a doctor's office. You should not sit in worship like you're stuck in traffic or attending a lecture. When you come before God, you ought to come before God with joyful shouts of praise. It's a sad indictment, you know, that if somebody shouts in church, we look at them like something is wrong with them. But you know, the text here declares that there is something wrong with us. If we know who God is and what God has done for us, and we can at least open our mouths with a joyful noise. Something ought to well up inside of us, overflow in our hearts, and come out as joyful praise to the living God. That is, we ought to shout to the Lord. Then verse 2 says, serve. Serve actually can be a synonym for worship. To serve the Lord is to worship the Lord. The emphasis of the word here, serve, means that God expects us to be an active, active participant in worship. It's not a spectator sport. We know that just because we sit through a worship service doesn't mean we've actually worshiped. This can easily happen on many Sundays. We sit through a worship service and later somebody asks us how worship was and we start rating other people's participation. But you know, the command to serve the Lord means the key thing is not how the preacher did, or how the choir did, or even if the kids in front of you were quiet. It means that we, you, and I have a personal responsibility to offer service to the Lord, and that's not just lip service. Anybody, well, mostly anybody, can act spiritual for 60 minutes on a Sunday morning. But real worship is life service on a day-to-day -day basis, beginning with heartfelt, dedicated worship. Maybe that's why we say Sunday mornings are the beginning of our week. There's much to ponder in this psalm. The message in each line is simple but bears our thought. Worship, serve. And then there's the final verse, a summary of the character of God, the God who we worship and serve. His steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. A summary of what we believed about God's core nature is that God is good. God is love. God is faithful. If the Jews of the psalmist's time were content to praise God for those three reasons, how much more should you and I praise God, given the gift of our faith? For us, God's love, goodness, and faithfulness are not just theological thoughts. They're a living person. For us, God's goodness has a name. God's love has a face. God's faithfulness became pierceable. He chose to die rather than to give up on us. So we praise God for Jesus Christ, who lived the life that we could never live, and who died the death that we should have died so that by his blood and righteousness, we can be restored to a living God. My friends, if that's not cause for worship and serve, then I must be looking at life all wrong. I want to close with a final story as told to me by a pastor friend. He told me about a woman in the church that he served. Every week, she prayed the same prayer. Oh, Lord, thank you, Jesus. Every week, that was her prayer. Oh, Lord, thank you, Jesus. 
kids laughed because they knew what she was going to pray every time. Oh, Lord, thank you, Jesus. Finally, somebody asked her, why do you pray that same little prayer week after week? She said, well, I'm just combining the two prayers that I know. We live in a bad neighborhood, and some nights there are bullets flying, and I have to grab my daughter and hide on the floor. And in that desperate state, all I know how to cry out is, Oh, Lord! But when I wake up in the morning and see that we're okay, I say, Thank you, Jesus. When I got to take my baby to the bus stop, and she gets on that bus, and I don't know what's going to happen, as she goes away, I cry, oh, Lord. And then at 3 o'clock, the bus arrives, and my child is safe. And I say, thank you, Jesus. She said, those are the two prayers that I know. And when I get to church and God has been so good, I just put my two prayers together. Oh, Lord, thank you, Jesus. I personally pray that every one of us gives as much thought to our praises of God as that woman. It really isn't hard or complicated. It's actually quite simple. Make a joyful noise, O oh Lord. God's steadfast love endures forever. Thank you, Jesus. Let us pray. God, in this time, as we sit in this place, may something that we've said or heard remind us of true worship, of whose we are, of all that we have, and that your love endures forever through the blessings and the frustrations, through the good times and the bad times. May we never lose sight of your presence in our lives. In Christ we pray. Amen. Now I invite you all to stand and join me in the affirmation of faith. As followers of Jesus Christ, living in this world, which some seek to control, but which others view with despair, we declare with joy and trust our world belongs to God. From the beginning, through all the crises of our times, until his kingdom fully comes. God keeps covenant forever. Our world belongs to him. God is king. Let the earth be glad. Christ is victor. His rule has begun. Hallelujah. The spirit is at work, renewing creation. Praise the Lord. Please be seated, and at this time, let us give to the Lord out of our abundance.
Our closing hymn this morning is, I sing, I shout the mighty power of God. Will you stand as we sing together? to join me in that woman's prayer. And, but I want you to pray it with meaning, with me. Oh Lord, oh Lord. Thank, you, Jesus. thank you, Jesus. I want that one more time. Oh Lord, oh Lord. Thank, you, thank you, Jesus. There you go, guys. You got it for the week. Make a joyful noise. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each of us now and forevermore. Amen.